guys, it's Drew the Kusha Collectibles. Welcome back to a brand new video. Uh, just got our CAC submission back, one of our best ever. We hope you guys enjoy today's episode. So our goal with CAC really was to not only know if we're right or wrong about coins, but also hopefully get some gold CAC coins. And gold CAC coins have been skyrocketing as of recently in terms of value, uh, especially on eBay and on private Facebook groups and also on kind of the auction houses. And so uh, in this video, like I said, we're, we've actually done a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of due diligence in terms of setting a lot of stuff in for collectors. And we ended up sending a few in for ourselves as well. And so uh, if you guys want to check out what we have available on our website, just a few kind of coins from this video, kushacollectibles.com. If you want to sell some coins to, to us, uh, my phone number is 832-538-4122. I'll be happy to talk to you anytime. But let's take some time, show you guys these coins, what our prediction was on the sticky note, and then what they actually did with the coin. Uh, this just allows you guys to have instant access to my feelings about a coin versus John or his staff's feelings about a coin. So we hope you guys enjoy these beauties. Start things off, guys. We have this 1889 uh, vehicle. It's a proof. It is a PCGS Rattler holder. At first, I thought this one would just be a green cac, just because of, um, you know, just the eye appeal of the coin. I thought it was nice, but I didn't think it was gold cac worthy. And as you guys can see through the sticker here, or actually through the slab, that this one did end up gold cacking. And when you flip it over, you know, you can't really see it just because of that, but. Uh, we did end up getting a gold cack for one of our uh, collectors, and uh, I think this coin really is going to be a nice little hallmark for his collection. He likes to pick up old V nickel rattlers like this, and really happy for him. I guess just the toning and the the level of the grade was really good for this coin, so very happy in that case for him. Uh, taking a look at another coin here, we have this 1879 uh, three cent nickel. That's a proof. I thought this coin really measured up in terms of its grade, I felt. I didn't know too much about these, and taking a look at the face, there's a few kind of scuffs there, as you can see. I, I think those might have played into the uh, just the opinion of John and his staff. There also is just a little bit of haze on the reverse here, um, but still a pretty interesting coin. And when we take a look, I thought it would be a green cac, and it didn't end up being so, which is okay. Like I said, we're still learning, but I do think this one really is a nice coin either way. The collector should be happy with it, even if it doesn't CAC. And you guys got to realize that too about your collection sometimes. Not everything has to be CAC stickered. A lot of the coins that we do enjoy are not CAC stickered because it's just at the end of the day, what coins do you really like? And sometimes that's not in, a, in agreement with what maybe CAC likes. The coin I want to show you guys next is this white label that we got. In the Bossier City show a few months back, was really hesitant on sending this one just because we didn't want to get lost in the mail. It's fully insured and everything like that, but I don't know. I th these just are so hard to find, and sometimes you just don't want to take that risk. We felt this one was a green CAC just because uh, there are a few kind of scratches to the right here in the fields next to this lady, and so we felt like it would be a green CAC, and then when we actually got the results the other day, we were blown away. This one ended up uh, gold cacking, can't even get it off. So I finally got that off and uh, this actually did pretty well. It ended up gold cacking. Um, when you take a look at the coin itself, it's just, uh, can't really do that with the sticker. But the surfaces were really nice and we had, um, a lot of people say this one wouldn't gold cack, but I think they were just a lot stricter on grading back then and this one really did play out well for us. This one's sitting in the personal collection for a while. And uh, yeah, up next is this pretty interesting Stone Mountain commemorative half. When I was taking a look at this coin, I felt it was a green cac just because of the nice fields that it had. And uh, when I was looking back through the video, I felt like this, the strike on the obverse was kind of weak. And that ultimately ended up me, after I made the video, like I said, thinking this wouldn't cac at all. 
I said green cac during the video though, so that's something for you guys to uh, you know take a look at. Sometimes I'm not the best at uh, judging things on the spot. Sometimes I need a second look, and that's what I would advise for most coins that you would send in for grading, or also for CAC. Uh, if this coin, like I said though, at the beginning was green cac. It didn't end up cacking just because, like I said, I think it's just a little bit of a weakness of a strike on the obverse, and uh, yeah, that ultimately didn't work out for that coin. I still like the toning on it, it's just a harder coin to find with toning. Uh, next is this interesting um, Walking Liberty half. I felt like this one really did have a shot at being a green sticker, just because of the really interesting luster that it has. A lot of these are going to come like this, but there also is just not many hits in the fields and on uh, on the details as well and so we ended up sitting submitting this one for Adam I believe and uh, when I ended up sending this in I thought this was the only one that was going to green cack and you're going to find out shortly that I was wrong another one did pretty good also I want to take the sticker off like I said uh, I thought it was green cack and it ended up doing well so for all you guys that don't know we actually started a podcast a few months ago been working on putting everything together and editing a lot of the uh, the clips and wanted to have some great dialogue with Blake from Royal Coins. If you guys want to check out that podcast, we'll have a link to that uh, YouTube uh, channel down below. You know, just a uh, you know, new episode will be there Friday for you guys to listen to, learn from, and it's kind of an iron sharpens iron type of episode. So we hope you guys enjoy that. Are you guys enjoying today's video so far? If you are, please leave a like. Uh, it would just help us because we can end up at the end of the day reaching more people that are like-mindedness in the hobby. Uh, make sure to comment your thoughts so far about what do you think about the coins. Are you uh, excited about some? Uh, kind of down about some others. Sometimes you just don't see eye to eye with CAC. And make sure to subscribe. we got new videos coming out every single week. A part two to the CAC videos that we've been doing. And also we're going to be talking about some shows and some interesting stories. So make sure to stay tuned and let's get back to today's video. Very happy for Adam because he is starting a nice short set of 66 CAC walkers and that one is going to be the first of many that he's going to work on. Here's a 1912 V-nickel. I thought the luster on this coin was pretty interesting and nice. I thought uh, this one measured up in terms of grade. Taking a look at the reverse here. A little bit of toning. Luster still pretty nice as well. A few kind of hits within the V here. And then uh, there is kind of a few touches on the face, and that uh, might have held it back from it being a, a cack. And this one didn't end up cacking sadly, just because probably of those kind of neck graded down hits on the face. Probably a nice 64, but not a nice 65, sadly. And so it is what it is. I still think it's a nice, pretty coin, even if it doesn't fit his collection. Here's one of my favorite coins that weren't ours that we submitted. A nice 30. Um, I think a 38S Texas, something like that. Um, nice kind of color on the obverse as you can see. And take a look at the reverse. It's got some kind of bluish green to that as well. Just don't see many of these with toning, especially in a rattler. So I really wanted this coin, but he ended up selling it to us after he got home. And uh, we thought this one would green cack just because of the strong strike and the interesting color. And it ended up doing so, as you can see. Um, just a really stellar grade and really happy for this collector. He's going to put this in his commem set and start working on those, I'm sure, as well, just like how we are. Uh, here's one of my favorite coins of the video. I tried to assemble a two and a half gold lib set, and I thought this one, to be honest, was going to green cack just because it has some really nice original surfaces, but I didn't think it really had enough for gold. And as you can see through the plastic, this one ended up going gold, surprisingly. So I guess this is just a really nice 58. At the end of the day or maybe even better and so John thought that as well and this one is also going to be going to the personal collection because um, ultimately when I bought this coin I wanted this to be the nice 1905 date and uh, once it got that gold sticker I knew that man this coin is something that you don't see every single day very happy about that one uh, here's another coin that we ha weren't too optimistic about this is a 1942 over one mercury dime I just felt like it had some old cleaning on it and it just didn't stick out to me as super original and so I thought this one wouldn't cack and when I turn over the coin uh, it's kind of had that same story for me just uh, you know not too appealing and so when it got back 
it ended up cacking. So I guess that my my uh, kind of a last assumption for this coin is that PCGS would net grade this coin down. And uh, when they net graded this coin down, it's probably because of that cleaning. So if it wasn't clean, I think they would have given this coin an XF 45. But uh, I think John, at the end of the day, thought they, they undergraded it too much and the CAC sticker was warranted. And so uh, that one was kind of perplexing to me, just trying to understand it myself. Speaking of old holders, this is a 1912 V nickel. This one is graded uh, by, by PCGS. It has an old doily holder. I didn't think this one would cack because of the few spots that were on the obverse of the coin and on the reverse of the coin. The color though is pretty nice and the luster is pretty strong also. But when it came back, it ended up doing green. So um, I guess the spots weren't too big of an issue for John. As you can see right above the A, that was my most perplexing kind of uh, issue for this coin. I just don't think that he likes coins with spots that often. And so this one I ended up passing, but most of the ones that I end up sending in don't do too well, sadly. And so, uh, I mean, just another win for the collector. Very happy for him. Uh, I mean, a doily, nice CAC sticker, everything that you would really want on a coin. This is a, a 1945S Walking Liberty half. The reason why we sent this one in is because, like I said, that collector wanted to have a nice short set of 66 CAC walkers. This full luster was kind of weak on this coin. And there's a lot of haze to the right um, of her and above in God We Trust. And I didn't think this one would pass, to be honest. And so when it came back, I was ultimately right here. This one didn't cack just because of that luster. Wasn't too good on the coin as compared to its counterparts. And we're going to compare that one just real quick to the other one that we showed off earlier. This one, you see how the luster is just more kind of caked into the coin on every type of uh, every little surface of the coin as well I just think it's a nice beautiful piece and uh, yeah I think I was right about that one to begin with just because uh, it just wasn't really measuring up and wasn't really a 66 walker to me and uh, when you take a look at this coin luster is also pretty strong on this one I thought there was a lot of hits out in the fields and a hit right on the kind of the curtain there or I don't even know what to say her leg there's kind of two big hits there. And so for me, I didn't think this one would cack because of that. And uh, John thought differently, surprisingly. So I guess the luster held up for this coin. Um, and uh, once again, I'm wrong. But uh, hey, a lot to learn for this coin. I think it's still a beautiful piece. And uh, I don't know. We, we live and learn. We live and learn. Uh, up next is another kind of uh, V nickel. We've been sending a bunch in this episode. This is 1883 proof V nickel. I think with sense. I said there was a lot of spots on the face here and underneath the nose. And then uh, when you take a look at the reverse here, there's kind of a little bit of haziness in the center of the coin. I believe they graded this one a cameo at PCGS, and I didn't see this one being a really good cat candidate because of that cameo, but also because of the spotting. And let's see if we were correct. So we were correct in uh, in the CAC submission originally just because of those factors. Um, it's, if, it's unfortunate, but it is something that we know at least for next time that uh, we can work on and be honest with uh, you know the person that we're sending it in for. Or if we end up buying it ourselves, send it, saying to ourselves, it's just not worth sending in. And so uh, another th good thing about CAC is that sometimes you're right and sometimes you're wrong. And then you can learn from that. Here's a 1903 vehicle. There's a lot of haze on this coin, as you can see, kind of some spottiness. And that, for me, I felt like wasn't going to uh, cack sticker. A lot of these come with kind of just milk spots or even PVC sometimes. And so this one really just wasn't very appealing to me. And, uh, yeah, at the end of the day, John agreed with me. I didn't end up cack sticker. Didn't end up getting the cack sticker, but, um, you know, it is what it is. Uh, it's still a nice kind of filler for the for the V-nickel set for that collector. Uh, the last coin I want to show you guys in this video is this interesting toned 1892 Indian head scent. That's a proof. Really nice blue color to the coin. There is a spot right above the head, which for me uh, just took it away from being a nice cat candidate. Like I said, though, we want to see if we're right or we're wrong. And let's see if we are right now. So we said this one wouldn't cat because of that. And uh, I guess John and his staff agreed with us. And uh, yeah, that's a wrap. Hope you guys enjoyed this part of the video. A lot of great coins that we shared. And make sure you guys stick 
stay tuned for part two because we're going to have a lot more great coins to show you with a lot more great results. Alrighty guys, so that's a wrap. Like I said, we got a lot of coins that we wanted to share with you and we actually did well on a lot of coins and then we were wrong about a few coins. And a lot of that just has to do with getting accustomed to V nickels, but also three cent, uh, three cent nickels as well. It was kind of a curveball when the collector asked us if he could submit all these coins, just because, like I said, we're still trying to get used to it and what those coins are about. But we ended up doing well for our collection. We ended up getting, what, two gold cacks this video, one for the white label, one for that two and a half gold. Really happy about those. I even said they would be green cacks, but I guess John and his staff thought differently. We hope you guys enjoy this video. Uh, we hope you learned a lot from it. If you guys want to see more videos from us, make sure to subscribe, like this video, um, just to reach more numismatists that want to talk about CAC or coin grading or coin shows. And comment your thoughts down below. Would you like one of these in your collection? Which one would it be? A lot of that, uh, you know, a lot of that great dialogue we'd like to talk to you about down in the comments. So we'll see you guys in the next video.